Alright guys, what is happening in the show here, and welcome to part 3 of my runespan guide. So anyway, now that you're 66 runecrafting, what you want to do is just go up the bung ladder. Obviously, once again, don't matter, uh, or don't worry about the runes that are in my infantry. They were just from testing. Anyway, so now that you're here, as you can see, the place looks red, and here's one of your wreaths, wreaths, whatever it is you want to call it. It's not one of them crazy... Jagax numbers. Anyway, so what you want to do is come across to your earth platform and just go north until we get to here. And as you can see, here is a comet platform. You just want to start heading east until you reach this platform. Now, don't need to, you're only going to be moving three places, and I'm pretty sure this is the part of the guide that most people want to watch. Um, obviously, because it's 77 to 99 and there's a lot more experience and like better stuff involved now at the end of this I am going to be posting um, or at the end of this uh, the video anyway I'm going to be talking about the different points which you can see up here um, on each individual wraith and essling and hounds and stuff like that there but anyway so what you want to do from 66 to 77 is the death s wreath or whatever it is so you want to call them we'll just call them wreath and the death wreath and you also want to be doing the jumpers the shifters and the skulls that you unlocked at uh, 65 that will spawn on just this platform now keep in mind you could be sitting doing it over here and there's a shifter and one of them could actually spawn over here um, so what you want to do is, now you've unlocked this, you unlocked this at level 65, you just want to just come over here, there's your node, click on it and away you go. Now a good way to work out nodes is, a lot of nodes seem to be very different, as you can see here I'm getting 64 XP as well as 2, right, but say, so that's 64 within 2 game ticks for Toxic, and the death rates are... As you can see, that looks like fucking a lot of <laughs> a lot of game text. Yeah, so the nebula would actually be better than doing the death race. Um, but no, it's up to you. I'm just saying what I think is better experience. And uh, there's the yellow wizard. You could uh, hold on, death runes. Where are you? All right, there we go. 7k XP, why not? So yeah, that there would be a good way of working it out. How many game ticks you get, um, or how much XP you get per game tick, and then, no, I'll, I'll just explain this a wee bit more better later. <laughs> anyway, so you want to do this, skulls, jumpers, and shifters, all the way to 77. Alright, so now that you're 77, what you want to be doing is, as you can see here, the wee comet platform, you just want to go across to that. Now keep this in mind, at level 83, this is going to be from 77 to 90, it is a big jump, but it's fairly FKable and shouldn't take you all too long to actually reach 90. Keep this in mind that at level 83, you also unlock the Bloody Skulls node, which is a lot of experience whenever you're doing it. As you can see here, there's a lot of people on this platform, um, all doing the Blood nodes, obviously through... Uh, trying to get to level 90. So anything, anyway, what you want to do is just come over to this wee crazy dog over here and just siphon off him. Now the node you want to look out for is the skulls, the bloody skulls, and the pearls. Obviously at level 83 then you'll be able to do the, the, the bloody skulls. But before that there, I would stick to shifters as well, or not shifters, jumpers, the wee blue ball thing it sits and bounces about. So that's the four nodes that you kind of wanna wanna track for, and once again you can just hop back, pick a platform, for instance this one, but this is a quite a big platform, so I probably wouldn't decide on doing it on that one. Like here, there's bloody skulls. I would probably hop back and forth from these two, and you wanna just be doing this till you are 90 rune crafting. All right, so now that you're 90. What you want to be doing is just coming back over to the missile platform. Now, this is where I know best because I was actually 94 runecrafting when runespawn came out. 
and this is what I did basically. So you want to come over to here till you find the other comet platform and as you can see there's plenty of people here so that's always good and uh, there's some skulls but this skeletal platform that you unlocked at level 95 you want to just go across to this until you see the soul wreath now look at the size of this platform this is the reason why I did it on this platform because the platform kind of looks like it's probably the, the smallest platform on fucking Rinspan I'm not too sure <laughs> but you want to be doing this here from 90 to 99 now Keep in mind, at 95, you unlock the the short or it's not really a shortcut. It's like the a platform to allow you to do the level 95 one. It's like a big long strip, and um, not too much to worry about because you're going to be here, so it doesn't really make any difference. And as well as being 95, you also unlock the living souls, which give you the best experience to do with nodes in the game. Actually, it is the best experience in the game. Um, whenever it comes to runecrafting um, but you just want to be doing this and there's a living soul <laughs> sorry my bad it's actually an undead soul that you want to be doing at 95 but needless to say 90 to 99 you want to be also doing your living souls your bloody pools your bloody skulls and your normal skulls as well as your jumpers which you see over here so once again, you just want to jump back and forth from these two platforms. The amount of people that are normally over there is quite a lot because I think, I don't know why, but a lot of uh, nodes actually spawn on this platform quite often. I think uh, maybe whenever I was going for 99, that most of the time I was actually on this platform and not on this platform. Um, but obviously the higher and rarer nodes spawn on this platform so that's why you just want to be jumping back and forth and remember balance your runes out or you will end up with no runes and having to collect the floating essence again so anyway as I was saying about working out how or what type of nodes you want to do I mean you can do I did from level 94 to 99 I did any node all the way down to a flesh growth I think it was yeah fleshy growth as I should say and the reason being is I think it was it's like 40 XP or something like that but it's 40 XP every single game tick now as you can see here it kind of works out that every four game ticks that you're going to get 106.5 XP and so say I was to siphon off this and this was the fleshy growth um, every time I was doing it I was getting 40 XP which is 40 times 4 which is 160 XP for the same amount of experience that you would be getting or for more experience than what you would be getting in the same amount of game ticks as a soul wreath so that there is a good way to work it out these wee floating things the white smoke things I don't know what you want to call it but the white smoke if you would class that as a game tick that's how, like as you can see here and I'm just going to show you quickly so that's one two one, two, three, four, five. So as you can see, fair enough, these last a lot longer than what the nodes are and you don't need to run about, but the nodes actually give you the best experience all the way down to the fleshy growth. And let me just show you here how actual bad the fleshy growth is. Um, if I can find it here real quick. There you go, fleshy growth. Need level 20 room crossing to do it. So that's saying something that maybe a few people didn't realise that these actually give more experience about the soul wreaths do in my opinion anyway if you work it out right um, per game tick so absolutely do the soul wreaths but anyway alright guys so next we're going to be talking about the points you gain points each time for siphoning of the aslings, the hounds and the wreaths so as you can see on screen now, I have separated these into different categories for each part of this guide that I've did. And first of all, we're going to start with the the low the low level floored points. Um, so first of all, the earth thing gives you 0.1 points. The mind earth thing gives you 0.2. The water gives you 0.3. Earth gives you 0.4, and fire gives you 0.5. Now on for the medium floor. 
The Cosmic gives you 0.9, the Chaos gives you 1.1, Astral gives you 1.3, Natural gives you 1.5 and Law gives you 1.7. The High Level Floor. The Death gives you 2.5, the Blood gives you 3 and of course the Soul will always give you the highest ones which is 3.5. Next we're going to go on to looking at the rewards and um, where you can buy them from um, what each individual one actually does. Alright so now that you're back at the entrance of Runespawn you see this guy here Wizard Phoenix. You just want to right click on him and go to shop. Now as you can see here you used to get this for free. You can still get it for free if you are members. For free to play obviously I think that you actually need to buy it. I'm not too sure whether or not you can get it for free and free to play. But here's just a few of the things that you can gain. Now, I haven't bought any of these before so I don't really know um, like how well they are. First of all, the Wicked Hood. You Obviously, you can teleport to each different altar. You have only two charges. You can teleport to them twice a day. Um, that means you can only, say you wanted to do Blood Runes, you can only teleport it twice, twice in one day. And then that's your charges used up. You cannot teleport to any other. You should already know what this is because of like it's been out for quite a while. Anyway, the wicked cape. The wicked cape, I believe, gives you two po or another twenty-five essence upon uh, the hundred essence that you get with the wicked hood. And obviously, they're both obviously the same color and they don't do anything else. The wicked robe top gives you uh, a weight reduction. So it means like whenever you're rune crafting, like your run will never run out. And the same with the Wicked Robe bottoms. Now as you can see along the bottom here, the Wicked Hood gives you uh, is 175 points. The Wicked Cape is 2.5k points. The Wicked Robes is 15k points. And the Wicked Robe bottoms is 7.5k. Next we're going to go on to staffs. The Lesser Runic Staff is 5k points. I'm not sure what this does, but I hear these staffs aren't really worth it um, for the points. Um, so there's not really much to say apart from this here is the best one and they glow. Um, of course, bloom and stuff and it's just going to look awesome. Massive Pouch. Now this was a big hype for whenever Rune Spam was uh, announced that it was going to be released that you're going to be able to have a massive pouch or a huge pouch, can't remember what it is, um, that holds up to 18 essence but the only thing is it requires 90 rune crafting to be able to do it which obviously with Rune Spam being released it shouldn't be actually all that hard but unfortunately these kind of, they don't degrade the same way as the other ones do, they just turn to dust after a certain amount of uses so being 1k points doesn't seem all too much and you can have as many of these as you actually want and just re just go to a bank and get a new pouch out and restart your uh, your runs. Next up I'm going to go into this. This is basically like your rank if you want to call it. Um, yeah your rank. This here is required for the trimmed completion cape and now I know a few people were a wee bit mad because Right now, this is the double rune spam points weekend for the Maid Mad the Maid Madness, should I say? And a lot of people already got rank one the points for. As you can see down here, twenty one or two hundred and eleven thousand points, which is the dearest thing in rune spam. As you can see down here, I have eighty two k. I'm not going to spend mine because no doubt they will bring more out for the whole rune spam thing. But a lot of people were complaining because they'd already went and got the two thousand points. I think it works out of like 110 hours or something that it takes to actually get this. And then Jagax decided to make a double double points after people have already went and gained this. But apart from that though, there's not really much. So all that happens is you get this wee symbol on the back of your Wicked Hood and your cape. I'm not too sure if they go on to the Wicked Robe top and bottoms. Then you have the colour of your Wicked set obviously. Now you just flick through the colours. None None of them really look all too nice, to be honest. Uh, Rune Spans very fluorescent and particles and bloom effects and all that other sort of stuff, but to me, I don't know, just the the whole the whole colour enough, it doesn't seem bright enough for what Rune Span actually is. But I don't know, it's Jagax. <laughs> the 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 can feel a few times. But anyway, I think that is roughly roundabout it on 
the shop and where you would use your rewards or your your points things that you gain from Runespan and I believe that is it from this guide. I hope this helped you guys in any way shape or form. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it gave you just a wee bit more info on what Runespan is and obviously a few tips and tricks to actually doing uh, Runespan. But anyway guys, thank you for watching and I will see you all later.